Right, so, so Brad, first I've got to ask you, UFC 189, big, big fight against Thomas Almeida. You know, you were you were knocked out by him. You kind of mentioned this was the first time being knocked out in your career. What were your reflections on the fight? Um, obviously, looking back at the fight, I was happy with my performance uh, in the first round. I, I, I won that first round, clearly. I looked really good. I felt so much better at this weight class. Uh, a little bit disappointed in myself that I veered away from my game plan. My whole game plan, my whole training camp was to take him down and beat him up on the floor because I, I believe I have much better wrestling than him and, and better ground. But I love I love to fight and I was doing well on my feet and I, I thought I could knock him out and, and uh, I was, yeah, so I was like, I oh man, not going wrong, I'll keep it up on his feet, you know, and, and give the crowd what they like, you know, uh, but man, the kid's, the kid's a talent for a reason, he was tough, I took him with a lot of shots, he bounced back, I could have crumbled, but he didn't, he came back and he threw one crazy knee out of nowhere and, uh, and caught me, uh, and that's just the nature of this sport, that's why it makes it, this is the most exciting sport in the world, where a fight can change just like that, you know. The first round, as you said, you knocked him down twice, it was a, cr a crazy first round. There's been a lot of hype around Almeida, a lot of people saying that he's going to go far in the UFC, you know, being in the octagon, sharing the octagon with him, do you, you know, do you feel that? Yeah, no, I do, I, I, well, I, I can comment on one aspect of, of these things, a uh, couple actually, one he's really tough, because I hear him some great shots, and uh, like I say, a young kid like that could have crumbled, you know, under that sort of pressure, you know, but he took it and he came back. Second of all, he's a very intelligent striker, I don't, if you watch the fight back, I remember him doing a spinning elbow, right, and I ducked it, right, he missed, and then he went back, and then he done a spinning elbow this time, but he didn't spin it up top, he spit it with a backwards like this, and he actually caught me on my nose and, and cut my nose, and I, and I, I thought that was like a really intelligent, like he's a very intelligent striker, you know, so, I think, yeah, I think if he brings the rest of his game up in other areas, you know, uh, I think, man, yeah, he could go all the way, you know, he does get hit a lot, but that that's what makes him an exciting fighter as well, you know, because like, he gets in the war, he, get, he, he gets bloody and stuff, you know, and uh, that's what the fans want to see, you know. Like, obviously, you guys are bantamweight, the bantamweight division, you know, we saw Burrell dominant for a while, DJ Delshaw, TJ Delshaw came in, defeated it in a shock upset. Do you feel that in this division where it's kind of, you know, anyone can effectively beat anyone that it's going to be good for you, especially moving back up to bantamweight and fighters like, young fighters like Thomas Almeida, uh, who are, you know, proving themselves against some of the top names here at 135? Um, I don't look at weight class. I don't look back at this weight class now and say, "Yeah, I'm going to compete and push for title shot." I've been in that position most of my career. I've always been in title eliminator fights, and then like, that's why that's only I was ranked number five in the world before I moved down to the to, to, to flyweight. You know, so like I wasn't exactly doing bad at the weight class, but I went down for, for the reason to try and get a title shot. I wanted to be able to at least do everything I can before I retire to be the best in the world. And obviously with a win over Demetrius Johnson before, I thought I could maybe get one win and get a quick title shot. But got as you saw going down to that weight class, it wasn't the, the styles of fights. Even the weight class was really tough, don't get me wrong. It was the styles of fights that did not suit me at all. And uh, so like, it was like an experiment for me. It was a business move. I always felt I was a better bantamweight fighter, but I had to try it. But I didn't want to look back at my career, be a would or should have could have. I wanted to say I've tried everything I could to get UFC number one, you know. That didn't work out, so I come back up to the bandway division. Now, for me, I just want to be involved in good fights, you know. Like, I want to fight people. Like, when they offer me Thomas Almeida, you know, like coming from two losses from the flyway division into the bandway division, the fight someone who's 19 and 0, a lot of people go, hey, hey no, I don't want that. You know? I want it, you know, because that's the type of fight I want. Not because his record, I didn't care about his record. Just looking at the style of fight it was, I just knew it would be a good fight and I want to be involved in good fights I don't want to I'm not chasing like I just want to be involved in good fights you know? you know, that's something we kind of see with a lot of English fighters coming to the UFC Bisping another example of that fighting who the UFC put in front of them I want to ask now you know the English scene is growing you know we're seeing more martial artists come into the UFC what do you think English and UK MMA still needs to do to elevate itself up to you know the level of the gyms that we see in the States you know SBG in Ireland. Um, 
Well, SPG and Ireland is only good because we've got a couple of good fighters you know, I mean, I, and good coaches. Um, and there's a lot of media attention around that gym. And that's what we need to do in, in the UK. The more media uh, and stuff uh, and more, it's more publicized and, and it becomes more well known, you see people who are good at, good at sports in school choosing this as a career path where back in back in the day if you were good at sports you go do something else where now in america if you're good at sports and you're a good athlete sometimes you go straight into mma you know uh, so that's what now I think UK needs to do. They need, like, I don't know, like Sky Sports News, you won't hear nothing, you know. So I think more it becomes, you look at you go to the sports part of the newspaper, nothing, you know. So I think it needs to be more publicised than it is, uh, be more awareness. Because to me, this sport has grown so fast in the small time I've been in it, you know. I, I knew this would be the, one of the biggest, biggest combat sport in the world. I didn't think it gets as big as it is to this day, as quick as it has, but I still think it has so much growth. You know, in America, there's a lot of collegiate level, like, like wrestling as well. You have a lot of jiu-jitsu camps out there, and then obviously now there's you know, a lot of big MMA, full MMA gyms. In this country, obviously we don't have that collegiate level of sport like wrestling. Do you think that's something that kind of gives us a disadvantage, you know, competing with the Americans? Uh, it did before, I, I believe, yeah, because it, obviously, if I lived in if I lived in America when I was a kid, I would have wrestled, hundred percent, because the type of person I am, I could tell I knew that'd be a sport for me, but it wasn't for me in England, and so I played football, and I played football at quite a good level, and that's what I did. But I, I think it doesn't matter so much now because I'm not. Uh, if you give, put me in a, on a wrestling mat with any of the wrestlers, I could beat you hands down. But you put me in a ring with a wrestler like Demetrius Johnson, he's a great wrestler. I took him down ten times in, a, in one fight, you know. So it doesn't matter so much in MMA, you know. It's a different sport, so. And also now, a lot of guys like myself have been over to America and travelled and learned skills because that's what I had to do. But now I'm back in the UK and I'll be teaching and coaching, so you don't have to travel overseas now to get the right tuition. Talking about wrestling, UFC 189. The big question was, can Conor McGregor answer the question, can he deal with a wrestler in Chad Mendes? Do you feel like he did that on Saturday night? Well, obviously he did because he won the fight, but I'd like to have seen, honestly, Chad in, in a full camp because I honestly don't want to take nothing away from Conor because I felt, I felt he, he's a great asset for the sport and I, I love him to bits, but Chad gassed, you know, and uh, that's that's in my eyes. Like if Chad, I mean, I'd love, I mean, there's always going to be questions, you know I mean? Like, can Chad Mendes, I mean, can uh, Conor be a wrestler? He beats a wrestler, then there's always going to be, yeah, but you know, there's always going to be excuses. There's no people hate, some, it's weird, we're so fickle as human beings sometimes. We hate people to have the success. You always try and bring them down. No one embraces it, you know. People get very jealous of people like that, you know. I, I think Connor is a great asset to the sport because someone like him brings so much awareness to the sport where. If you're a fan of MMA, you know who I am. You know who these guys are. But if you don't know MMA, you still know who Conor is because he brings the attention out from outside of the sport. He brings more eyes in. And more eyes coming into our sport is only going to help our sport grow. So someone like him, I think, is a massive asset. And whatever he earns, whatever he gets, he deserves. So my Frank Edgar, do you feel like he's going to be just as tough with challenges, you know, anybody for Conor with such a good wrestling background, very, very durable and he knows how to fight smart. I think Frank Yeager is the hardest fight for anyone in that weight class. He, he's the I, my eyes, he's the best. Um, yeah, obviously, Puff Mando is out of beat, but I think, especially for Connor, Frankie is the terrible matchup. But Frankie's not really marketable, you know. He, he's very quiet, keeps himself to himself and stuff. Uh, but stylistically, terrible matchup for Connor. I'd like, me as a fan, I don't want to see him fight Frank Yeager. I want to see him fight Aldo, you know. That's the fight I want to see, and that would be the big money, and, uh, and that's the fight the UFC going to go for, because that's what's going to earn money. Briefly, just going back to UFC 189, we saw video footage of Dana White kind of having a little conversation with yourself after the fight. What, what was your take on what he had to say? Do you want to be really honest? I don't know if I should say this or not. I can't remember that conversation. You know, I, I just got knocked out, and I, until I saw that back on video, I couldn't remember seeing Dana White. You know, I couldn't remember leaving the cage. 
So and that sort of stuff. Uh, I was obviously a bit a bit concussed, but uh, yeah. But when I look back at the man, I, I love Dana White. He, he's a pleasure to work for, uh, and you know, like I, I think he's a very fair man. He's very harsh and strict when he needs to be. But he's very fair, you know. He, he gives people what they you know, generally deserve, and if you, you know, I think he's a very generous man. And um, yeah, and says kind words about me, and I've only got kind words to say about him, you know. So I can keep my boss happy, and it gives me a little bit of job security, you know. So we're here in uh, Glasgow for the first ever UFC in Scotland. Your good friend Rob Whiteford's on the card. How do you think he's going to go? I mean, I think he walked right for the, uh, especially against. Um, I think the style of fight for him is going to be, it's going to be a good fight for him. You know, uh, I know that uh, our teammate fought him, before, not fought Conor, he fought. Um, his uh, wife for fight again. What's his name? Redmond, Phil Redmond, right? Uh, one of our teammates fought Phil Redmond uh, not so long ago. Masal Bettik and Dumb extremely well so like and I think quite I mean like uh, uh, Robert trains with, uh, with him and Peter Lodi and he's been training so well he like I went out to America he thought he to do my camp and he was already out there you know so he's been out there a long time you know training hard for this fight you know and he's ready you know so I think he's going to do really well and, and definitely I think he's going to come away with a win so you mentioned there briefly American top team is that something that you're going to continue to do you think maybe through the, the remainder your career is head out to Florida and train with those guys. If I continue fighting, I will go to American top team every fight I have. I wish I had done. But back in England, I have a great training camp back in England, great partners and stuff. But for me, I sometimes like to get away from my day to day life, you know. So for me, it's traveling away, get away from my day to day life, and just concentrate on fighting. And that's what American top team gives me. You know? So I'd always, but if I fight, I will go there. Finally, the main event uh, tomorrow night, Michael Bisping, Talis Ladies. How do you see that one going? I, I'm going to go root for my Englishman, uh, Bisping. I think Bisping is a little bit more well rounded. I mean, Talis Latest, Latest will uh, give Bisping a lot of problems in the early rounds. Uh, is it a five round fight? I think the longer the fight goes on, Bisping's cardio is second to none, and I think he will outwork him and then maybe put him away or win a decision later on. You know, uh, but he's going to be dangerous in the first few rounds. For, 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 I think for um, for um, Bisping, you know. So, uh, but I believe the longer the fight goes on, he's going to play in Bisping's favour. Thanks, Brad. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just like you.